Hollywood viewers and welcome back to the South Man Auto Channel. Sitting inside 2009 Chevrolet. It's the Impala. It's got the big 3.5 in it and the money lights on. We'll back back out of here. Now it has a PO700 stored in the engine which means we have a problem in the transmission. Now we'll get this code for you because the code that it pulls does not exist in service data. Uh, let's see here. View all DTC. So it's a P 182 Charlie and the definition on that is internal mode switch B circuit high and oddly enough when I looked in factory service data that code doesn't exist at least on uh, you know in Mitchell or all data under a list of possible codes so long story short we have to treat this with our own routine uh, did a little bit of digging now this transmission has mode range switches internal in the transmission which tells the transmission module what gear it's in now up on the dash uh, you guys have to take my word for it when you run it through the gears the Prindle display doesn't say anything this says park reverse neutral drive low or 321 and it doesn't have the little square box that goes across the display uh, and with these four switches in the transmission there's a b c and p like paw um, they change from high to low they're you know they supply I, I believe that the best I could tell is that the transmission module supplies voltage to them and then when they're pulled to ground the signal goes from high to low and I can look in here on scan data and I will pull up the data here and show you we'll find these switches and you'll see as I select it through the gears that switch B never changes states it always stays high so let's see here so we see, hopefully you guys can see, I'll try to get it out of your glare. Ah, you're looking, I can't see, but we change states, we keep an eye on B. And no matter what gear I go into, you know, B never moves. And then back to park, and I believe when I went to reverse, the IMS, the internal mode switch, states that it's invalid. Now it reads in park, it does not read in reverse. I don't believe it was reading in neutral. No, it does not read in neutral. Drive two, one, drive third, drive two. So it's definitely goofing up, you know, what the transmission module is seeing. So uh, I did find a chart for us that tells us which switch, which one of the four uh, are supposed to be engaged during certain, you know, shift select operations. So I'll show you guys a copy of that chart. Uh, I think the main thing is, uh, you know, I really don't care which one's supposed to be on, which one's supposed to be off currently. The fact is, B never changed status from high. It always stays high, no matter where we are. So why don't we find that wire, where that comes out of the transmission, test it, see if we can pull it low, uh, which we should be able to just do with a test light, simple bypass test to see, you know, is the transmission module good? Is the wiring good? If it is, then, you know, we can only make the assumption that the switch inside the transmission is bad. And that is assuming that all four switches utilize the same ground, because if they do, we know the ground's good, because the other three work. So here is the range switch chart that I found. So like I say, when it's in park, it's supposed to be low, you know, high, high, low. I mean, you guys can read, I don't have to read it to you. Uh, but this is why it can't read reverse or park reverse. I don't know what the difference is here, what park reverse is, but um, anyhow, you can see where switch B is supposed to go low in all of these options here. Um, you know, which it's not. So at some point it's supposed to go low. So, uh, let's see. And you could also, if you don't have the chart, I also, this is where I found it initially before I finally found it here. Uh, so this is switch B right here. And you can see, you know, reverse neutral drive in three. It should be grounded. And as we can see here, every single switch, um, so switch P, C, B, and A all utilize the same ground. So we, we don't even have to go check that ground now ground was bad all of our switches would be high technically because remember they send power down each one of these wires and that if that's open circuited they're high when they're pulled to the ground they're low use your claw hands to make a quote and here is our wiring diagram now I highlighted these before I printed it let me, let me get my sparkly pen and we have range B which one's B this one's B and it is, oddly enough, the yellow wire. It's highlighted yellow, so that goes from um, internal mode switch, comes out of pin G, yellow wire, goes to the transmission module, pin 46, 
Uh, so we're gonna unplug it before we even dig out wherever the transmission module is. We're gonna see if we can find this connector, unplug it, we're gonna short that with a test light, test light hooked to ground, and we should be able to see that on scan data. And just to make sure that test works, we're gonna check it on you know a couple of the other signals uh, coming out, and we should be able to see that. Pulled the air filter cover off because the connector for the transmission transmission period is right up here at the top. However, we're done. I got the classic aroma as I removed it. Ta 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 ta. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're gonna find a broken yellow wire in the pile. I'm assuming this is where our problem is. Pretty good odds, I'm thinking. I think our approach was right, though. Live in here. Do you know how extremely happy I'd be if your mouse came out and we had a screwdriver oh. and scared you? Tuh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We just made like 100,000 people jump. <laughs> you want to take uh, hedge bets on how many thousands of comments we're going to get about getting Hatana virus? You're going to get the Hatana virus. Is that hair in there? Ah, uh, yeah. Mice are hairy. So, let's see. Do we have a yellow wire chewed through? Yellow wire? We have a green wire. We have a tan wire chewed through. That one's chewed. Eric, that's not mouse hair. That one's chewed. Where's the little yeller? In the middle. I don't see yellow. Oh, there's the yellow. There's yellow and black. There's yellow right there. There it is. <laughs> so we got about 20 wires to fix, but there's our yellow wire. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna clean this out uh, before we get started without making any dust and wearing a level 7 hazmat suit uh, to make sure all our viewers are happy. And then I will wash and sterilize the box in my hands and then we'll be right back. So there we go, easy diag. Fun fact, from 1995 to 2017, only five cases of the Hantana virus, I guess it's called, have ever been reported in New York State. We are quite east of the Mississippi, however, we are not exempt from the disease, but I will take my chances. The people always tend to kind of freak out. Will you make sure the key's off, Jay? Yep. We're going to open this little guy up, and we're going to have to fix every single one of these wires. The key is off. Yeah, I think it did get quite a few of them. Let's have dinner. Yeah. Probably with his family. Oh my gosh. Did you chew any right next to the connector? Oh, uh, they always do. Yep. Now uh, we got that wire. We got that wire. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, last one. Those are calm wires. We definitely got the yellow wire. That's the wire we were after. That's one we knew was broken. So we made a good call on that. Good thing you sterilized all those. Yes, it is. Ah, a little bastard got down here too. Right next to it? Yeah, I'll just. Keys off right now. Jason said so. Let get the engine controller out of here. Hey, David. Oh, There's that one. There's that one. Hey, it's okay. Get some wire repairing apparatuses. 
So I think the only fix here, folks, is going to be, so this one is, you know, got enough mouse piss on it that it's turned green, besides the green wire that's getting the green crusty. So we're actually gonna have to cut this and unfortunately I have to add in a section of wire. And I think any spot where it is, you know, cut, I would not feel good just putting tape over it. Uh, so we'll have to add in, you know, appropriate gauge wire and uh, solder and heat shrink it. Um, now some of the wires down here did not get all the way through. He just ate the insulation, just grazed it off the edge. So uh, those I'll just wrap a little piece of tape over. That's not a big deal. There's a couple, two, three of them where they just been, you know, it's kind of nicked uh, on the insulation. Uh, obviously we got a com wire here. Uh, we're gonna have to fix that. So I'm gonna go through and fix these. It would be a boring, monotonous video showing that. I will show you the finished product now. We are missing a whole section of yellow wire here, so that must have been in the uh, been in the mess of the hair and stuff. And we will look over the ECM wires here also, just to see, make sure none of these are, you know, been nibbled on. Let's see. I don't see any marks on those. So, that's good. I guess it's good you got only one section. So, I'll get these fixed up. I found a whole roll of 20 gauge. We're gonna upgrade it with some Honda rodent tape. There it is, the anti-mouse tape. Uh, just in case this little guy is still living wherever this car lives. Well, this car is actually from another shop. It's one of their, it's a big body shop and they have four loaner cars. This is one of their loaner cars. They, said they loaned it out and the lady brought it back and the cleaning guy went to clean it and saw that nothing worked. So, but the lady didn't mention anything to him. We're gonna put some rodent tape on it. You can do your little research on this. It has been treated with some hot oil. Cap station, cap spin oil. Some really hot crap that mice don't like. So we're gonna take and we'll wrap it up here. All the repairs were made. Now Honda had a problem way back in the day. And I guess all cars still do with their soy based wire insulation. And uh, apparently it smells like a french fry to most rodents, so they enjoy eating it. And they had some particular problems with some of the odysseys and the fuel pump wiring where, like, all mice ate it. <laughs> and this tape here was actually part of a, well, part of a couple service bulletins they ha they've had in the past where there's some common rodent damage areas. So we'll wrap that in some rodent tape. And, uh... Hopefully they don't get back after it. I'll probably ought to sling up these harnesses too, just in case. And it's kind of funny, the last Impala I did a video on way back when, I mean, it's not the last Impala I worked on, but one I did a video on was the same color. I believe darn near the same here. This is a nine, I think that one was a seven. And that had a mouse, you know, in this box. This is a pretty common issue on these, oddly enough. To get mice down in here where the ECM and the TCM live, it makes a nice little home for them. I really like it in here. So we'll get these wrapped up and then we will plug it in. Probably should have plugged it in before I uh, 
finished taping it all up because this tape is kind of expensive and you definitely don't want to have to take it all back off, that's for sure. I won't show you all the wiring repairs, but I'll make you sit through the whole tape job. I'll put a link to this in the, in the description box. I think you can buy this stuff on Amazon. There may be a generic brand of it also, I don't know. But I get it right from Hondu. You don't use a lot of it. Uh, or at least I don't. Anyways, unless I, you know, do something like this. Hi, Goldman. Hi. Yes, ma'am. What was the labor on that? One. For just for the spring? Yep. Okay. And then service. And then the service, yep. Is that proof tape? It is. Perfect. There we go. Rodent free. With the Hondu. Rodent tape. Yep. Yep and yep. That clicks in like so. There's that. How does this one plug in? Let's see here. So you got a locator. We'll say it goes like that. That one's clicked in. Stuff that back in the box. That stuff back in. There you go, Mousy. Enjoy that, fella. Let's set our Tech 2 down here. We will see if we have our Prindle display now. That'll be our first clue. Hey, look at that. We got park. Reverse. Neutral. Whoops. Neutral. Drive. Three, two, one. And park. Hooray. So we have all that. I guess we can come back here now. We should see range switch B moving. Well, there. Fixed. No problem at all. We got a clear code. Oh, no codes. We don't have to clear them there because that was unhooked. However, we will back out here because it had codes in other modules. So I'm just going to let it do an all system scan. Let's see, this was a VIN N. So we'll let it scan because it had ABS codes in it. But I see the ABS and traction light is off now, too. And it was just a loss of communication code. So this will go through and check all the modules. I just want to see if there's any left in the um, uh, EBCM. i surprised there's not one in the engine right now because we've got the uh, mass airflow unhooked. Huh, that says zero. And we have the key on. So once this is done, I'll go through and we'll clear the code out of the uh, ABS module. And there's no con with the heat seat module because it doesn't have one. I was waiting for this thing to finish, and now we are down. Right, we got no codes. Perfect, mm -hmm. except for, like I say, the heated seat module, but this has cloth seats in it. So we'll back back out of here. All right, now I put everything under the hood while I was waiting for that. Put everything under the hood together. How's that sound? All right, let's see. really slamming into gear before but all right beautiful <laughs> Chevy Thunder all right folks that's it a uh, pretty easy one uh, even you know without service info we were able to come up with our own you know diagnostic plan or strategy just based on code description you know uh, seeing that switch it's high it's you know supposed to go low uh, no idea why they don't have that in service data. Uh, I was a little perplexed by that myself, but you know, kind of deal with it and move on, you know. And uh, we made the right call, even right down to the color of the wire, you know, the yellow wire we were going to find is broke, and that's exactly what we found. Even though there were some other wires that weren't going to be long for this world uh, due to the mouse urine, uh, apparently it affects copper, makes it green, kind of nasty. 
That's it. How about you don't be nasty and go down there and leave a comment, question, criticism, concern that you might have. While you're down there, subscribe or ring that bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.